Hey there folks, how are we doing? Bit of a different one today. So since my hometown has been sort of doing the rounds on YouTube lately with the likes of Boulder Bankrupt, Backpacker Ben, Joe Fish and Tour Towns all making uh, videos about this, how this town has basically, basically uh, you know, become so deprived and run down. So with me being from this town, I thought I'll give my two cents. So welcome to Western Supermare. So as Joe Fish very well put on his video about Western, the unusual town name of Western Supermare is a mixture of Saxon and Latin words, with Western coming from the Saxon word Weston, meaning place to the west, Super, Latin for above, and Mare, Latin for sea, or pronounced Mari, so place to the west, above the sea. It's also throughout history been known as Western Juxta Mare, with Juxta, Juxta meaning by, so place to the west, by the sea. It's also throughout history been short to just Western, and it's also been known as Western by the Moor, with Moor being Welsh for sea. So, growing up here, I've seen this town go downhill and downhill and downhill. I mean, even back in its so-called heyday, well, from the heyday that I remember at least, it was still a very rough place. So, I'm going to start off by taking you to a couple of nicer parts of the town, and then we'll dive in to the nitty gritty. Okay, this is Uphill Village. This is to the south of the town. As you can see, it's a very picturesque little English village. Behind me there is a church that dates back to 1080. Um, in this village, this is where I went to primary school. Uh, this is where my grandmother lived when I was a child. And uh, yeah, lots of fond memories of this uh, little village. This part of uh, Western Supermare definitely is not a dump. Uh, I'm quite envious of the people that live here. This is somewhere I would like to quite, quite like to end up. So I will at some point be making a full video of this village because there's a lot of history around here as well. There's a Bronze Age burial mound behind that church. And after I'll go into detail about the church and the surroundings. But yeah, this is a full village. Definitely not a dump. Right. And now here we have somewhat of a hidden beach. This is Sand Bay. Right over there, that's Robby Woods, of where I did a recent video. And behind me in the distance, that's Sand Point, that also features in the same video where I talk about the hill forts and the disc barrows and bowl barrows. So yeah, you can see, beautiful little spot. Dog walkers are all out. This, this is a hidden gem, right? No one comes, well, not a lot of people come here. In the summer, we're in the seafront, could be busy. This is still very quiet. It's a very, very, again, very beautiful part of the town. Very quiet, it's peaceful, and it really is a good little escape. So yeah, I mean, just look at that. Again, definitely not a dump. But I mean, so those are, those are my sort of top two nice parts of Western. Okay, it's going to get a little grimmer soon, but um, before that, there's one thing I want to show you guys. It's sort of uh, looking into a bit of the more mysterious side of Western. So Western does actually have a bit of a past, the occult. You may have heard of a, a mysterious occult group called the Golden Dawn, who are basically made up of high-ranking Freemasons and Rosicrucians. They had three temples throughout the UK. One in Bradford, one in Edinburgh, and here behind me is the Osiris Temple here in Western Supermare. So here basically all the high ranking occultists from the UK and apparently even Alistair Crowley among them would come here, they'll stay here, they'll be accommodated here, they'll do their practices here, their studies here, and uh, there's also a pub in the centre of town, I'll put it on the screen now. In the basement, in that very pub, it's another location of where they would basically do their occult activity. It's also rumoured that Alistair Crowley then put a curse on the town of Westerfield Supermare to basically stop anyone from ever leaving the town. Which is quite funny really, because like nearly everyone I know that has left Western has, has ended up back here, me included. But anyway, enough of that. Let's go into nitty gritty. Right. This is Burnbeck Pier. 
This pier has just been sitting there rotting into the Bristol Channel now for decades. Okay, for as long as I can remember, it's just been sat there, just rotting. Over the years, over the years, people have gone about buying it, restoring it, doing stuff with it, but they never do. I took it to state of it. It has recently just been purchased, but what, how they're going to restore it, I don't know. It's going to be one hell of a project. I saw in this part of Western now for a very long time and uh, as you can see it's just started raining <laughs> very typical of this uh, little town but yeah there's more right so what we have here now is quite a depressing little road see these are, these are all Victorian buildings here but once all like you know hotels all busy with all the tourists coming in to West, Western Supermare for the weekend for the week now look Boarded up, derelict. Yeah, just like the Burmet Pier, just left here to rot. See? It seems like nearly every building on this street is just, yeah, just abandoned, derelict, and rotting. See? Yeah, it's, quite, it's, it's actually really quite sad. Obviously, you know, the amount of money that went into these buildings, the amount of work that went into these buildings, and you know, the architecture is, you know, actually very nice. It's just, yeah, sadly, just run down. Here we go, you've got this building here that's now flats. We keep going on. More flats. <laughs> and with this one, look, the entrance completely sealed off. And, uh, you know, this sort of reflects on the town's history a bit, you know. Because the thing is, like, with seaside resort towns, they were once, you know, the, the place to be in Britain, all right? This was, the, like, before the time when people could just jump on a plane for 50 quid to Spain or whatever. So, you know, as less and less people come to seaside resorts now, obviously the businesses that were catering for that industry are all just drying up and just rotting away. It's quite sad. So isn't that typical? I put my sunglasses away because it's raining and the sun comes out. Anyways, right, so that behind me there, that's called a Tropicana, right? Now, it was built in 1937. And at the time, it was the biggest open air swimming pool in Europe. And on top of that, it had the, the highest diving board in Europe of the time. Now, I'm old enough to have gone there myself as a kid, but uh, around 2000, it closed its doors. I was just sat there derelict for like 15 years. It started being used as a calf again. And it now occasionally hosts events. You might remember the, the Dismal Land exhibition, the Banksy Expedition. That, that brought a lot of tourism into Western. But other than that, <coughs> it just basically sits there. Big building, once, like I said, the biggest open air swimming pool in Europe now just a waste big building that I can, I can remember in that 15 years that it was derelict and wasn't used at all I'd always walk past it thinking when are they going to do something with the Tropicana and they haven't really done anything it's just literally it's just going to be a building that's used for the old event here and there and that's it and a calf <laughs>
Right, so that pier behind me, the Grand Pier in West Supermare, that actually made headlines back in uh, 2008 because actually the whole thing got set on fire. It said that I was down to an insurance scam, there's nothing to prove that yet, but uh, the pier was rebuilt in 2010. I personally very rarely go on that pier. I can't remember the last time I went on there. Because the last time I checked, you've got to pay to get on it. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to pay to get on it. And um, yeah, it's just you know, amusements, arcades, typical sort of seaside resort to pier. But uh, yeah, I mean, by all means, if you're in the neighborhood, check it out. But yeah, don't expect to be blown away by it. <laughs> right, we are coming up to now what is for me, the most, probably the most depressing parts of the town center of West Supermare. Yeah, here we are coming up to it now. Let me tell you about this. All right, so this behind me, all fenced up, was once a place called Dolphin Square. Dolphin Square was like a sort of like a market area. Lots of really cool independent shops, record shops, bookshops, clothes shops, pet shops, bakeries. I used to love coming here. Like there was um, an amazing little record shop that I used to buy countless CDs back in the day. And not only that, all that was a big, you know, block of council flats. The whole thing, about 10 years ago, I think, just got demolished with plans to sort of, uh, you know, build something better. You see around me, we've got all this sort of, uh, these buildings. We've got, you know, a Cineworld and Nando's, but then we've got these shops here, not used. Apparently it's because the rent was raised so high they just packs it up. And it's really depressing. Every time I come here, like I have memories of coming to the, the market. I had friends that lived in the council flats actually. And so many small businesses and homes just gone for nothing. And not on, on top of that, there was a nightclub around here, just around the corner, which isn't there anymore because this got replaced by it. It was a, a nightclub called Hobbit's Nightclub, which is a heavy metal nightclub, which back in you know, when I was young, a right little mosh, I used to love it. So many good memories. So all like, the good memories I have, like Dolphin Square, that nightclub, just demolished for this. It's really sad. So back in the day, there were pubs and nightclubs all along this nightclub. Nearly all of them gone. Back in like sort of 2000s, from what I can remember, the nightlife was very, very busy. People coming down from Birmingham, especially, you know, the Midlands in general, coming here for the stag do's, their piss ups, you know? But I mean, it was rough. There were fights around every corner. I noticed especially it was around 2010, when the nightlife really started to die down. Maybe it's because Western's reputation got, got worse. But as a friend of mine suggests, it was around the sort of time when social media was getting really big and you know, people like to show off what they do, so they'd rather spend the money going out to fancy restaurants to show off their fancy dinner. You know, there's a sort of culture around sort of a then changed dramatically as well. So, you know, I've been living back in Weston now since, well, I moved back here back in 2018 because I lived in Bristol for up my 20s. And I've only been out once or twice on a night out. And I was, I'm always amazed with how quiet it is now compared to how it was back in the day. It just seems like, you know, the popularity and the reasons to go out in this town just get worse and worse and worse. And as a result, the town just sinks more and more into depravity. You're probably wondering how much it costs to live in this town. So tell you what, let's run through a few uh, house prices and rent prices. Right, let's have a look for sale. So yeah, okay, so nearly a million pounds for a six bed detached. Well, this is in the countryside, so let's keep scrolling. Um, let's, let's look at the, uh, the lowest price ones. There we go, 170 grand for a three bed masonette. Um, Lots of retirement properties, 80 grand, 80 grand, 90 grand for a one bed apartment, 
This is this, this is a yeah. This is this is the cheaper end, 110, 100 grand, which okay, but by no means is the most expensive. But these are all like you know just small flats. Let's have a look at what we can get to rent. So to rent, what we got? Yeah, 900 pound, or nearly a grand a month for a two bed flat. Yeah, all about a grand, 100 pound a month for like a small flat. Um, again, this is a, by no means the most expensive, but not exactly the cheapest either. Huh. <laughs> So you're probably wondering, Wissett Snowmad, how come you live in Weston? Well, you know, you always have that sort of special connection with the town that you're, you're born and raised in. Because I mean, I left here when I was around, what, 23 years old? I went to live in Bristol, and then um, I, I stayed there until I, was, up until I was like 30 years old. I moved back because of a, a job opportunity. Now, I've got to be honest, I really like it the second time around because it's a good hub. Okay, the good thing about Western is it's nowhere away from anywhere. I'm right in the heart of Somerset. I've got all of Somerset's wonders on my doorstep. The Brecon Beacons is in like an hour and a half away. Uh, Exmoor, Dartmoor are very close. Wiltshire is very close. If what even gets to London, that's only a couple of hours away. Okay, so, and not, you know, for me, ha um, house prices are cheap. I own my own place in here. I couldn't, in Western, I couldn't have done that living in Bristol. So, it's one of those places, like, you know, if you keep yourself to, a, to yourself and just get on with what you need to do, it's not too bad. Pardon me. <laughs> it's a bit too soon. So, this is the thing. You'll see that people that grow up here hate it because there's nothing to do. It's full of uh, druggies and alcoholics and it's very rough and there's little opportunity. But people who move here later in life, all really enjoy it because, like I said, they got their little social circle, they got their the money that, that, that they earn that they, that, so they can afford to go out to pubs and restaurants and live cheaply compared to what they were living in before in like places like Bristol, Birmingham or London. They can sell their properties in those cities and buy a house outright in this town. So yeah, this is what keeps this place going, I guess. <laughs> Okay guys, so that is Western Supermare through my lens. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of uh, very questionable things about this town. And um, like I said already, it's good for me now, later in life, earning a good salary and owning a property. And uh, it's like I said before, it's a good hub. Um, there is a lot of beautiful surrounding areas, like I told you already, like the Sand Bay and the, um, up Hill Hill, and don't forget, like that video I made in um, about Worldly Hill Fort, that is Western Superman. Um, so, the thing is, guys, I mean, even though it's a bit of a black pill, you're seeing what, sorry to say, the real England is like, this country is surrounded by magic, okay? You can just go outside your front door and head in, in, into any direction for a mile or two and you'll come across with something of real historical significance. Okay, that can never change. That can never go away. You know, towns can crumble, they can be rebuilt. However, our history, our glorious past, cannot be. As I keep saying time and time again, guys, if you don't look for what the past has left you, you will not find it. And as you guys know, I keep going out there and looking for it. So really, living in a town like this means makes no odds to me so with that guys I just wanted to end this sort of video on a bit of a positive note what will happen to Western Supermare in the future I don't know I can't see it being particularly bright you know there's that old saying you can't polish a turd <laughs> and I think that's very relevant to our Western Supermare but we'll see um all I hope now is um, 
that instead of investing in um, restaurants and pubs that only like you know people that, that can afford to go there can go and of, uh, of which don't very last for very long anyways yeah well, I hope that yeah you know, it's just further goes into you know the youth of the town because I feel I feel they're you know at the biggest they feel the biggest burden really I definitely did growing up, at least I feel so anyways, and it's definitely a lot worse now than it was back then, so I can only think what it must be like for the youth of this town now. Anyway, thanks again guys. If you're new to this channel by the way, uh, this is like I said very different. Um, I'm, I'm normally going deep into our wilderness and exploring the most beautiful historic parts of this country, so please uh, scroll through my past videos and um, as, as you know guys, buy me a coffee, subscribe to the Patreon, and please like and subscribe and leave a comment and say hi. So yeah, thanks again guys, um, see you at the next one, thank you.